A base building is being damaged. Your base is under attack. Give me orders. On station. Something is moving I'm out here. Your six. As you order. Start it up. You, you do look like a bit of a zombie. Oh, God. Start the intro, will you? <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> welcome, everybody, to uh, this month's podcast. Uh, we've got Revit here, and we're going to be starting off this month's podcast with the merging to into the normal branch. So, obviously, like, they, that's, a, that's a pretty big, big update. Um, since, you know, obviously we've got some very large things that are in the experimental build. So, uh, let's, uh, let's touch base with everything that's been added into the normal branch from the experimental. Okay. So this month we finally were able to merge over everything that we've been developing since January into the, from experimental to the normal branch. There was things like the LCAC, there was things like the hovercrafts, oh, sorry, the hovercrafts, LCAFs, the LHA-6 assault carrier, the uh, evacuation fixes, other quality of life changes, and I know there was a little bit of confusion on Steam in terms of what went in this month, because I know I got a lot of questions about it on the comments for the version number of uh, 10. And just to kind of break it down, I mean, it was the, it was docking, it was um, being able to build units on the aircraft carrier, it was the ability to build weapons on the aircraft carrier, uh, and, then, and then basically the, some of the balancing that came into play after that. Um, we also worked on quite a bit in terms of people with the community to kind of like resolve some evacuation issues and to try and uh, mitigate some like weird quality of life things that have kind of been in there for a while. Um, an example would be is that you couldn't repair your sandbags or like your um, basically any defensive placement that the assaults built. You couldn't actually repair them. So we kind of went in we made some changes there. A lot of pathfinding fixes here and there. We had the level designers go through and rework the navigation for some of the roads because they were set up in a way 
that were causing cars to act funny. Now, realistically, that's not going to really get more focus until we segue into the more advanced driving AI that's coming up next week at this point. We have about a couple more bugs that we need to just kind of eradicate going into this weekend, going into like early next week. And then from there, we'll be switching over to just rewrite the whole vehicle AI from the ground up. Um, let's see, what else has there been? Uh, we switched over the lost condition to winters. And in doing so, we tweaked uh, the Leviathan and the uh, birds so that they will hunt the carrier in the mid to late game. But you still have counters against those via the weapons you can build on the aircraft carrier and the uh, the rim, which is the anti-air that we put in there that basically has a double the range of the sea whiz. So it can really shred bird groups when they're coming your way. But if, if you are not paying attention, your system could be overwhelmed because those individual weapons can be attacked. Um, we made Winter's a rebuildable hero only from the assault carrier. Um, that's going to be going in the direction of we're going to be doing an audit. So after we do the advanced vehicle AI, we're going to steam roll, switching over all the current vehicles. And then we're going to do the... Um, the new ones, then the air, then the helicopters. Then we're gonna audit the non-mechanized ground units and give the circ more abilities across the board. And then one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna also use that as an excuse to just kind of improve Winter's combat abilities and give her the ability to buff units in terms of XP gain around her and kind of give her as a hero that you actually want to have out in the field. So like the circuit doctrine thing is gonna be taken in layers after we do the vehicle AI, and it's going to be like, okay, let's look at the sniper class, let's look at the heavy, let's look at the assault, and let's diversify them and make it to where there's actually a reason to build them besides just building the assaults and then calling it GG with two or three engineers. So it's one of those things where we're going to be looking at how people have been playing over the last couple of years, months, and just kind of come to a conclusion of like, okay, like we need to give these classes some more abilities, give them some better weapons, and X, Y, and Z. But I digress. And then, um, let me see what else was there. We also added it in there finally, so then that way evacuations have a consequence if you're evacuating people that are infected. By doing so, we made it to where if the if you are infecting pe if you're <laughs> evacuating people that are infected, they will immediately turn the moment the Chinook lands and beeline it to your carrier mast and try and destroy it and scuttle it. Um, that's one way that the infected will try and take down your carrier, and then you have the leviathans, and then you have the birds, and then you have the little guys that will basically swim to your carrier and say hello. Now the swimming part is coming sometime next week, it's one of the last things when we officially start the vehicle AI. We're kind of squeezing it in there with the advanced, uh, right before the advanced AI with like bug fixing. We're also in the middle of working on some attack move stuff, and we'll get into that later in, into the podcast and probably open the floor up for questions and concerns from the community, whether it be on YouTube or whether it be on Discord. Um, let me see. Anything I'm breezing over, Duravar, before we move on to the next line item? Uh, I'm just having a look. I think we've covered... Because without going into the nitty-gritty... Oh, right. I mean, we basically reworked the garrison system and made it a lot more modular and easier for us to work with and for modders in the future. So that, that way it's easier for us to prototype and put in new vehicles into the game. Uh, it's more of like a behind the scenes framework thing that people aren't like super excited about because it's more of like we're excited about it because it makes our life easier because whenever we can make our SDK cleaner and easier to interact with, that benefits the players in the long term because then we can ship content faster. And it, uh, oh, um, and then I guess I might as well mention it because we're already on it. But we also snuck in a boat reverse logic, so then that way the carrier is a lot less likely to beat itself or end up inside the mountain. And then we've been kind of trying to keep uh, an eye out on the community in terms of like whenever the carriers or the LCACs act funny, uh, whether it be in screenshots channel, Discord, or YouTube, whatever, trying to catch all those instances and just kind of uh, fix them by working with the community to kind of figure out how they broke them. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for, like, basically the merge, because otherwise it's, like, there was, like, 300 plus things, honestly, so I don't want to sit here and list out every single thing, but those are the base, those are the most notable things, 
And at that point, um, yeah. Anyhow, back to you, Dervar. Yep. Uh, so, moving on to uh, the next patch that you've also released that uh, fixed uh, quite a few issues. So, uh, experiencing crashes, disability, and things like that. Uh, also fixing the issue with the player camera, always start and start the carrier. Uh, if you'd like to try and touch base on some of them, as well as tracking down the issue to delegate issues with the LAJ system. Oh, basically we were just going through and just kind of fixing up bugs here and there. And then the other thing I forgot to mention is that the aircraft carrier can refuel and rearm units. And that we also added the water shader system. I'm sure everyone's noticed the new water, but it's in there. Um, when it comes down to those bug reports, I mean, well, let's just skim over those because those are very minute. And I'm pretty sure we're going to bore them. Um, I pretty much have summed up all the patch notes already, Jervar, so we can segue into the next line item. Okay. Um, yeah. Because of the carrier. I've got all my notes a bit mixed okay. up here. Um, of all the, the things you sent me, they're not good. I haven't had a chance to sort of put them all into a coherent list. Oh, I haven't remembered. Okay, so the next thing was the attack move. So I'll just jump into that. So basically, um, I think it was Mana. I brought it up, actually. But uh, we had a discussion earlier in the week, I think it was on Monday, where basically we were talking about the vehicle AI and we were with the community. So we had like an event on Discord where it was basically like, hey, we want to hear what you guys have to say about the vehicles. And one of the things that she brought up was the fact that just across the board, not even the vehicles, if you issue someone a right-click attack order on a unit, they don't know the move-in position. They don't know how to gain line of sight to shoot the target. So you don't have to micro, like, you know, babysit them to make sure that they're actually going to engage someone. So we've kind of taken the last two days and just kind of work in that base quality of life system alongside bugs and other fixes for animation and crashes to essentially work it in there so that way, like, you have that. And essentially, if you right-click someone, whether it be a vehicle, whether it be a person, um, they will move into line of sight and they will keep information. Now, how it works essentially is that if everyone's already in line of sight and you select a group and you right-click, they'll just shoot the target. But if the target starts to run, if the target starts to basically leave the line of sight of individual units, those individual units will reposition to track the target and kill the target. If it, if it moves out of the range of everyone, then everyone will form up and then track the target, kill the target, is basically how it's implemented. Um, we also went ahead and re retroactively changed the attack move so that they no longer calculate it on a per case basis and they calculate it as a, as a team, a formation, a squad. So if you give everyone a move or an attack order, I'm sorry, from the bottom right command and you, they're set to a formation, they'll stay in that formation as closely as they can based off of, you know, obstacles and they will uh, do the attack move together as a team now instead of doing it as, like, individuals, because the problem with the individual approach is that you ended up getting these situations where everyone would bunch up on each other, and then one acid spit, one juggernaut slap, you know, one melee attack would hit two or three guys instead of just hitting one because they're not even respecting their formations anymore. So that was something that I kind of had earmarked earlier in the week when I was playing testing the last build, and I was like, this is a little bit cumbersome. Because I've been kind of taking the time to play a lot of old RTS games as well, just to kind of like get ready for doing the vehicle AI. And I was like, yeah, we got to stop putting this off. We just got to, while we're doing what Mana was suggesting, let's just go ahead and just fix the attack move so we don't have to go back and finesse it and edit it and change it later on. So that was something that was important to me. So we kind of pushed that out there. Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. Am I still kind of low, Maka? Maki? I'm just making sure on YouTube they're saying I'm kind of low. So just let me know uh, if I'm still low on YouTube and I'll see what I can do about boosting it when Duravar starts talking again. 
Um, uh, that pretty sum, that pretty much sums it up for the attack move. You want to hit the next point, Dervar? Uh, yeah, we're going to hit up to the next point. Uh, we did cover the evacuation improvements, did we? Sure I mean, know. briefly. I, I mean, it, it's more of a drive-by is that we just... We, we kept asking for save files from the community. People were emailing them in from Steam on the email. If you are still having issues with evacuation, you need to make a thread post and you need to tag me because we're about to officially move on. So you figure, um, yeah, we fixed, as far as I know, all the issues. So until someone else reports it or brings it to our attention, and we'll have to basically address that. And then alongside that, I think it was also Mana that came into the that realized that some of our logic was off when it came to this the the uh, the chance of an infection civilian evacuating because uh, I think she like built like uh, a base a, a game session that was only based on evacuating and did the numbers and she was like out of holding bays and out of all the cages and you know, and everything else, like, nobody was being infected, really. So we went back and we looked at our math and we kind of improved it and tweaked it to make it a lot more realistic, reliable, based off of, like, if you are evacuating from compounds or zones that have any level of infection, the chance of a civilian being evacuated that is infected increases with the severity of that zone's infection level. So, like, when you highlight over a card, for a uh you know like a zone you'll see like it'll rate it in terms of like the infection level and then you look at that and you're like okay that'll let me know that if i build a, a civilian administration structure in this zone you know that's kind of like a meter of threat in terms of like yes i can take away resources from chelsea but at the same time civilians that are being evacuated or moved to other zones from this area will have a greater chance of uh, being infected so that was what we basically tweaked there and kind of just cleaned up. Um, anyhow, back to you, Darla. All right. So um, I also noticed uh, we all uh, that you put up images of an endless volcano. So in the general aspect of that, I, uh, it looked like it had like several mine launchers on the back of it. Is that so going to me... sort of uh, is that going to sort of lock off a zone, or is it just for a specific radius let me uh share my screen for those that aren't aware of that and that i can talk about this for a good hot minute so give me a second let me just open up both pictures and put it up on the monitor up yonder and I mean, then now people when they file. oh okay well no okay <laughs> so as you can see on my share screen and on the YouTube, the idea would be... Oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Big Nevit. Let to share that one. There we go. So as you guys can see on my share screen and on the YouTubes, uh, this is the volcano system that we're building. I think the South Koreans originally engineered it. I don't remember the exact... I know it's from... I think it's from that area of the world. And essentially the idea is that it's going to be a system where those little tubes are mines that get shot off from these little bases like a rocket almost and they go to pre-set points so we'll be getting rid of the individual mines that you essentially deploy from the engineer those are going to be going to the sniper class as part of our non-mechanized audit um, and basically the idea is that you will build one of these atlases that you will zone a location and then when that zone hits a certain like like, you can set, like, how often you want to go out there and replenish. So if the infected or civilians keep setting them off, then they would know at a certain level of depletion to go back out, drive by, shoot a couple mines out to basically fill the occupant locations, and then from there go back to wherever, you know, you have it normally. So that's, that's the general idea that we're going for when it comes to this. And that way it's mostly automated where you essentially just build one of these uh, from the motor pool. And then essentially you just tell it like, hey, I just want you to saturate this area. You paint it with some kind of tool that we're going to engineer. And then essentially from there, you know, Bob's your uncle. And it will just keep, it'll make, no, it'll allow you to create no man's lands basically where you could deny like anyone from entering a zone. And the idea is that we're not going to make it to where it can be just be set off by anyone. Uh, it's going to have a friend or foe system. 
So it'll be able to tell your active alliances and just be like, okay, I'm going to set off a little Timmy because he's like, you're an enemy with that anarchist group. Or, you know, or you're obviously an enemy with Chelsea. It'll set off for all of her people. So the idea is that, like, it won't friendly fire your own units if you walk over them. Now, if you're walking near a mine and then someone else walks over the mine, then yes, that will hurt you because of the AOE explosion. But you can't set off your own mines and your allies can't set off their own mines is the idea. So that's the direction we're going to be going in with this. Um, yeah, and that's the volcano system. Do you want to hit up the next one that we have on the list for pictures? Uh, we can indeed. Uh, so, the garrison queuing. Do we want to cover that or do we want to cover the next one? Uh, let's keep it on the pictures, and then we can segue out from there after that. All right, the VTOL. I'm very excited. Actually, no, you're right. We should, we should. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We should do the, we should do the garrison queuing. I'm stupid. You're right. right. Uh, I have a video for that actually, so I can just bring that up, and that's why I, d I didn't make the connection there. So this is basically a system that was also suggested at our community event that we had earlier in the week on Discord. So we were able to set up a system for vehicle queuing, where the idea is that if you shift click, you can tell people to and on mass to enter vehicles, and uh, it's a quality of life change. It made sense for the vehicles on paper, regardless. So it was like, well, we could do that. We could do that in like 20 to 30, 20 minutes to 40 minutes. So let's just get that out of the way. So we did it, and it worked great. And it's something that's going to be coming into the next uh, patch when we uh, finish up. The um, I gotta go brain fire. When we finish up the uh, why is it not looping? Oh, stupid thing. Yeah, when we finish up basically the uh, issues that we're having with the attack order, then we'll be able to uh, bring that over essentially. Um, so that'll be what's gonna be included. And then you want to, uh, I, I guess we can show the Bradley off real quickly for those that don't know about it. Just the picture and the VTOL. Okay, so I will let me open up. I'm gonna show you guys what we've been working on. We just got the VTOL done. We just got the mounting uh, system situated as well. So here is the VTOL that we have. Um, it's slowly but surely been coming together. We we worked on we started working on it earlier in the week. Uh, there was a lot of optimization and retopo re that we had to do. So it took a little bit longer than we'd like, but it's an engine. It's waiting to be, be the final rigging to be taking place. Uh, so the propellers move and everything else. And then you can see it in regards to the C5 Galaxy right here in terms of its size. Uh, both of them have the basic Cirque branding logo stuff on it. And of course, uh, your chemos that you guys buy off of the Steam store, the, the little support packs, those will all apply to these vehicles on launch. Um, so they'll just work. And you can see there's an interior for like, you can load up your infantry here. Um, it will not have the ability to transport um, like the carry vehicles. It'll only just be a really quick in and out assault uh, aircraft for like transporting units in like the jets, jet mode is the idea because we're going to actually have it where it's the hybrid where you can switch between modes um, and then obviously it'll just it'll fly essentially it'll also be our little test craft for seeing how well we could do uh, flying units potentially in the future because long term I do want to bring in uh, drones and um, the Hornets that can launch off of the assault craft. Well, we've, we've decided against it for the time being. Originally, the plan was to try and sneak them in um, during the Doctrine stuff, but we were worried that would make the Doctrine uh, section of the roadmap take too long. So in the sake of time, we chose to basically just do this VTOL as a test. And then from there, if everything goes well and we're ahead of schedule, then we'll consider putting in the Hornet and uh, assault predator drone uh, as a last minute uh, trigger treat kind of deal. But it just kind of depends if everything goes to plan and it doesn't take too long to implement all these babies when it comes to the uh, roadmap and our schedule that we have to keep. Uh, but you can see that the VTOL will have a weapon system uh, that you'll be able to buy 
to essentially allow you to engage targets and provide fire support with some basic, you know, gimbal support to be able to adjust. It'll be a little more maneuverable than the little bird that we're planning with. Little, little bird will require direct line of sight within a, a, a certain arc. It's a video game, so we're not going to have it to where little bird has to point one to one to its target. But that'll be a good amount of like maneuvering for the little bird to shoot its targets over this one that'll have a little more flexibility in terms of how we're making the weapon bracket here. Um, yeah, that that sums up the uh, VTOL. We've been kind of working our ass off to try and get their, all the vehicles uh, on a backlog. So then that way it just comes down to we can get them all rigged, we can get them all skinned, we can make them look sexy. And then from there we can hand it over to the programmers once we finish up the bugs and the advanced AI and then just roll through them. So the Bradley's already done, the Abrams is done, um, the MRRS is, well our animator got sick earlier this week, so that will be done-ish in the next couple of days. And then from there, he'll just be going through the other vehicles you see the lag, like the VTOL and the C5 Galaxy. Those will be rigged uh, when he feels better. And we'll just, you know, that way we have a huge backlog to go through. Um, that kind of sums up the uh, VTOL and whatnot. Um, was there anything else? Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the visual component of the show, Durvar. Unless you have anything else you want to ask. Uh, did you show up Bradley? Oh, right. Oopsie. I... <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, you're right. Hold on. Okay. Why did I keep it showing happens. up screen? Hold on. Let me just go ahead and grab the Bradley pictures. Oh, here it is. So yeah, here's the Bradley. For those... For those that haven't seen, this is the Bradley. It's more so this is a review, so I know a lot of people that come during the weekly ones have already seen these, they've already seen them in action, uh, in our gameplay maps, but essentially these babies are rigged and in the game as of right now. We just, we want to release it as one big update, one big patch is the goal, instead of just kind of uh, drip feeding it here and there. So that's the idea is that we're going to wait till the new vehicle as AI is and then we're going to redo all the current vehicles and then we're going to just drop the Abrams, the Bradley, and the MRRS with the C5 Galaxy all at the same time. And then from there we'll shove the, well, then we'll focus on the air units. Um, actually no, technically we have to kind of do the DNA and the uh, mining atlas first and then we do the helicopters and we drop those once we redo the vehicle flying AI. Because I know there are some pressure points people were mentioning on Monday when it came to the flying AI and two as well, and I've I've kind of seen them as well. Um, I don't know if you guys want me to show these guys playing in combat. Do you guys want me to show you them shooting stuff, or move on to the next topic before we get on to the AMA? I mean, how, much, what, how are we looking on time for the to be on course for the AMA? Well. No one's saying yes. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well. I don't know what that means, Grink. Well, okay, we'll move on then, because I don't know if anyone wants to see it in the gameplay. Alright, well then, um, let me see, let me see. Let's go ahead and let's segue into the next section. Okay, one person wants us to show it. Why are we started opening up the editor anyway? So I'll just show there. It'll only take like a minute. They can just put them into a map, draw, uh, spawn a dummy character, and then that way they can at least just see, for those that haven't seen, because I know not everyone comes to the AMAs and not everyone sees the monthly reviews. So, here we go. Here's our editor. Excuse the ugly model right there. That was someone playing around with BVs, and they forgot to delete that from the map. Let me delete little Timmy over here. If I could just, there we go. All right, let me search for the Abrams. Oh, that's right. Okay, little Abrams there. We're gonna put the Bradley in. And then, let's 
too. Is there anything else I've been sneaky that they haven't told me about? You guys have all seen the El Cap, so that doesn't count. And then that old supply truck can burn in hell. Okay, so let me go ahead and spawn in. Supply truck can burn in hell. Yeah, but like the old like World War Two like Vietnam supply whatever it is like you know what I'm talking about like the the, the Ural oh I don't know what it's yeah. called. It's not the Ural. Ural. You know what I mean. So you can see these are basically them functioning. I'm gonna tell this one to hold fire, and I'll just spawn a Leviathan because I'm a dick. Oh wait, I probably should have told him to hold fire. Okay, I guess the spawning of Leviathan doesn't like me. Oh, that's why. Poor little Abrams. He was too young. Never too young to meet Greg. You can see the toe isn't working yet. We're kind of saving that for when we basically get to, uh, you know, fully implementing it. But that'll take quite a day or so to fully get set up. Did he run on ammo? Oh, yeah, he's at that safety. Where he's not able to shoot his gun at targets at a point blank. Yeah, I think the Leviathan decided to uh, go to sleep. Let me just spawn <laughs> a juggernaut. I remember when the uh, Abrams used to just absolutely obliterate poor old Greg. Yeah, I think that Dimitri might have nerfed him a little bit. I'm not really sure what happened there. Again, all of this balance is still very early. Oh yeah, the damage seems to be up quite a bit. <laughs> Look at Greg moving underground. Yeah, it looks like the tank is also set so that it can't turn all the way around. There's something weird going on there. Again, this is a we have to kind of go through like a day or two of last minute audits before we release these. But there's a quick drive by of just generally how they're working. Um. I don't think the people. Yeah, can you guys hear the sounds? Tonight. You can hear the Leviathan growling at me. What a dick. No manners. He's like hiding under the map. Yeah, he's just hiding under the map. I, yeah, he. Yeah, um. That's fun. Okay, well, here, I'll just show. Let me just do this. One last thing. It'll spawn some stands that are infected. Actually, I think they're pretty much both good on ammo. <laughs> do, 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 do. I don't want to spawn a pod. I want to spawn. I probably should make this monitor have its text larger. Let's spawn 25. So the hologram for the movement of the Abrams will be, uh, not the Abrams, the Bradley needs to be changed. Oh yeah, the Abrams is getting destroyed somehow by fucking people. Definitely some tweaks need to be happening to its targeting acquisition. But that's going to be a part of what we're doing for the advanced vehicle AI. Is that like, that's why another reason why I don't want to release these is I want to redo how we handle turning, how we handle physics, how we handle dis destruction for driving through stuff, how we handle driving people over. Because in that situation, that Abrams should have manhandled every single infected in its way. It shouldn't have tried to reposition. It shouldn't have tried to be do curtsies and be nice. It should have just drove over everyone and killed them instantly. So, I like, don't want to shoot the infected. What? 
<laughs> the no. was like, I don't want to shoot the infected. Well, it was weird because like you you guys can see the shortcomings with the current vehicle system is that like they try and like do a dance where like when you have a vehicle and an infected next to each other, they basically kind of like slide against each other and do like a cur curtsy. I don't know what it is, but they just kind of dance around each other instead of the vehicle being like, no, you're not an obstacle. I'm just going to run you over and kill you instantly. And the only thing that the vehicle needs to take into consideration is the mass of the object it's trying to run over. So, like, a juggernaut can't be ran over. Because a juggernaut would just grab the tank and push it back or whatever. So that's the idea is that, like, the, the vehicle has a better sense of, like, what's around him. The same thing with the Bradley, the same thing with the Striker, to where they can just drive through them. So if they're standing and infected meleeing you right here, he's not going to adjust. He's not going to move around. He's just going to go forward and kill them. Just run over them. And the idea would be is that part of this system is going to be like every infected that you run over will affect your max speed to a point where like your tank or your Abrams or your vehicle stalls out because it's just entrapped by a lot of infected. So you can like, you know, and each vehicle will have its own weight class where it's like the Abrams, I would imagine, can, go the, can run over the most people before it's just like, GG, bro, I can't move anymore. But that would be the idea. We're going to be testing those systems. And, like, that's going to be part of, like, what we put into the emphasis for, like, pushing these systems out. So I'm really excited for, like, getting to the point where these bugs are resolved, hopefully, in the next 24 to 48 hour workday is going into Monday, Tuesday. So then that way, all the focus will be put into, like, the lower class vehicles, like the Ajaxes and the Striker and the JLTV will go back and we'll basically, like, fix them. And then what we learn from there will be applied directly to these babies before you guys get your hands on them. So what we're going to end up doing before next time we meet is that we would uh, put out maybe one or two vehicles utilizing the new system on experimental. And then we'd just be like, break them. Tell us what you like. Tell us what you hate. Uh, but break them. And then that would be the idea is like, try and run over people. You know, try and get them to freak out. And then once you guys are happy with, like, we'll probably do the Ajax and we'll do the Striker as two different weight classes. So the Humber and the Striker. And we'll push that out as, like, a duplicate vehicle. So it'll be, like, not the old vehicle, maybe. I'll have to work it out with my programmer in terms of how we're going to do it. Because we might just put a, a ghost vehicle in. that. So then that way, like, that's going to be a new class, a new AI controller and all that stuff. So I don't, we'll, we'll work out the logistics and we'll run it through you guys before we release it on Experimental in the next week or two. So then that way you guys can tell us like, oh, okay, I see how I test this unit now. Um, so let's see. There's that. Uh, is there anything else I can show? I'm trying to think. So the toe's not in. Um, why is my mouse gone to sleep? Why did I get a wireless mouse? Note to sell people, don't get still series wireless mouses. <laughs> I bought one today, hoping that it would make my life easier, and it keeps I cutting out. I thought it would be good because I work between a, I work between two different monitors on a large desk, one for doing game design and one for playing games, and I thought it would be easy to move it without having to fizzle with the cable, but I can't move my mouse right now. So I'm going to have to go find another mouse and plug it in. Piece of crap. I tried that, okay? Like, what the <laughs> come on. I used to do computer <laughs> IT. I know these things. <laughs> okay, there I it goes. I got it. It's back alive again until it breaks again. Okay, so, uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. What else do you want to hit upon during our probably open it up for discussion from the community? Um, I'm just having a look now. Let's play around with the. Covered... Bradley. I think we've covered all the My major stuff. My new favorite stuff. child. You're the Bradley, your new favorite child. Yes. Everyone loves the new favorite child. I like Bradley's. <laughs> They're my favorite. Anyway. <laughs> Abrams. Uh, favorite. Everyone loves the. That was the. Uh, that was. I love the. I like the. I like the Vitals. I like the Bradleys. If I had to pick my favorites. Or flying a jet. That would be my favorite thing. Oh. No. But anyhow, what else do we have on the list before we open it up for community questions? Uh, I think that's, for the most part, all the major stuff that we've covered. Uh, we've covered all the patches and bug fixes. We've covered the attack move, evacuation, Atlas, Garrison, VTOL, Carrier, and Bradley. I think we 
we've actually covered everything in our list. Okay. Well. Now that I look through it, yeah. Okay. Well, then let's go ahead and let's open it up. And then for next time, YouTube, I will figure out why you guys can't hear the audio and solve that. I have a theory why. I think I need to add a audio. Yeah, I need to add the op output audio. Because right, yeah, 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 that's what it is. So I'll add that for next time. I'm sorry. But for next time we do this, I'll have that working. Um, okay. So let me go ahead and stop the share screen. And we can segue into the questions part. So um, anyone have any, uh, I guess let's start, the, uh, start that part of it, Durvar. Oh, I know for a fact that someone in the YouTube chat was actually asking about the campaign. Now, oh, I'm excellent sure if question. You want to talk about that, but, uh, That's fine. Can, yeah, I can hit upon that briefly. So, what was their question in particular about the campaign? Let me see if I can scroll up. Uh, they were just asking if there's any campaign. So, ultimately, the goal is is that that's coming in 1.4 to 1.5. Right now, the plan is 1.4. Is that we're getting everything situated? Let me actually just link our roadmap. That would make his life so much easier because then he'll understand what in the heck I'm talking about. So hold on, I'm gonna link our roadmap in the website, so you in the YouTube, and then I'll link it on the Discord. And the idea is that that is basically like we're going through 1.3, we're gonna wrap up, finish 1.3 with co-op, and then at that point we're starting on the campaign and we're starting on the factions at the same time. Because both of them have to be done anyway. Woo. So that will be when we do the campaign. Um, can't really give you an estimate right now, but that's the goal. Is that by the end of the year, is to have the campaign. But we'll kind of see how we go and go from there because I don't want to rush the campaign. My biggest thing is I want to get to the co-op as soon as possible and get everything up to it baked in. And then take the time we need to make a campaign that's thought, that's planned out, that's fun. It's not rushed, and, it has, and it's a long story where it's not like two to four hours, like eight to ten to twelve. So it's one of those things where like we have a plan, we have the scripts, we have all the animatics for the cutscenes. But from all the recent changes, there's going to be some updates, especially with the operator being added. We're going to probably use that in parts of the campaign to allow you to play in third person at times for story moments. But those are all things that we're still like talking about internally. And we're waiting. We're, just, we're making like a like a like a board. Well, because I've have I have a board, and the writer has his board. And then we're gonna meet sometime in the summer, to the late summer, to basically start to like rediscuss the campaign and figure out like how all these new changes and mechanics and systems that have come into pandemic are going to affect our plans for the campaign and X, Y, and Z. Um, but yeah. Anyhow, back to you, Derivar. Okie dokie. Uh, someone in the Discord chat was asking about infected climbing on vehicles. Does he mean ambient vehicles or circ vehicles? Um, I think he means circ vehicles. Circ vehicles aren't planned yet, but ambient vehicles are something that we're discussing about how to do internally. Uh, we're going to... Oh, no. He's a, he's a hard one. Okay, so, uh, circ vehicles aren't planned at this time yet. Um... When it comes down to the ambient vehicles, we're looking at World War Z, we're looking at other games, and we're trying to figure out when the best time to do it. If we're going to do it, it's going to be around the time that we do the infected AI revamp on that roadmap that I linked. Because during that time, we're going to be testing a lot of things for the AI and figure out what we can do, what we can't do based off of resources. Um, really, re computer resources. Because we could totally put it in tomorrow. But... What is that going to be the effect on the AI in terms of their cost of like evaluating the world, pre-building navigation, and a lot of other variables of how well the engine handles it? So it's like right now we're using when we implement in the uh, the little guy swimming early next week. That's going to be our test bed of like okay, now let's scale this up and infected AI and let's make it to where the standard infected can swim. They'll just jump off the bridge, and 20 to 30 percent of them drown. But they're going to make it to the closest bridge, or sorry, they're the closest beach to come say hello. You know, like that kind of stuff. So we're taking baby steps. 
in, the, in these directions of like slowly but surely pushing the tech. I know that a year or so ago, I, I demoed some like spitters running up a wall, reaching the top, attacking some heavies, and then killing them. Um, but basically, that only really was proficient, reliable in terms of like performance and reliability in test maps. Uh, we were kind of waiting until the engine matured a little bit to where basically we could implement it on larger maps. Like to give you an example, I can I can implement those on the horde maps because they're small and they're easy to build navigation. But we implemented those on the world map a year ago. I can't remember the exact date. They just stopped working altogether. So if they don't work based off of the engine implementation, when we get to like the standard AI in card, then we're gonna have to do a custom solution. So it's like one of those things where like we don't want to bite off more than we can chew. We're just kind of doing things sequentially, but that is on our list of things to evaluate when we get to the AI card. And we'll have a whole list. So right now the AI card is just like when we mention these things, but as we get closer, I'll put a ping out and I'll be like, look, these are all the things we're going to be evaluating and testing with the community to see what feels too broke, what doesn't feel too broken, what feels balanced, because we don't want to add a bunch of abilities to the infected that makes nobody want to play the game anymore. So we'll have a ping. We'll have an experimental and we'll test things with the community and figure out what we can reliably do and what's unstable in the engine and what needs to wait a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, well, it, it's long term. That's something we're looking into. But for the circ climbing, no, no. Uh, back to you, Jeremiah. Yep. Yep. Uh... It's Tempest uh, in the YouTube chat asks, will units ever get customization on the skins uh, uh, affect assault class, etc., or maybe the medics look like they're icon? Look like they're icon? Yeah, I'm not sure what they mean by that. So when it comes to the customization of the classes, right now the assault is the only mesh that's final. Um... The other ones are going to be undergoing some augmentations or improvements, I would say, behind the scenes between the co-op and the campaign. Because you figure we're planning to use that extra revenue for when we release the camp the co-op, sorry, to invest into like the campaign, but also to finish aspects of aesthetics that aren't finalized that we have to bring out bring on board outside specialists that are expensive. So we've kind of like the heavy, the sniper, you know, the radio man, they're all kind of like mishmash put together by like Michael, essentially, and they're not final, but they get the idea across. And then, you know, we'll feel better about releasing skins for those characters, whether they be we just, you know, grandfather them into like the vehicle ones, or we just make new ones based on how people want, or we make it to where people can make their own via modding long term. But that's when we would get to that point. So right now, like, we're conscious of it. We know people have been asking for skins for the for the non-mechanized units, but you gotta wait a little bit longer, I would say, until the co-op is out. We get the extra revenue, and then we're gonna reinvest that into like specialists for a better character modeling. Um, back to you, Dervar. Uh, air tech, yeah. uh, are you going to be able to do builds of the vehicles on the carrier? Also, will Infect be able to group up in a large horde and charge barricades and such, like in the in World War II game? Right now, the only thing that we want to allow buildable on the carrier is non-mechanized units and jets in the future. So, at the very least, you'll see us adding like the VTOL and the Chinook and the Little Birds. But and then, like, jets, right? Like, I mentioned this earlier, is I want to add the Harrier, I think it's called, and the Assault Drone. And we're using the VTOL, the test bed, to see how hard it is conceptually. And then if it works and we can sneak it in there, we'll sneak it in there. If we can't, then we'll sneak it in later on. That's why the, hel the airborne units are being moved to their own air doctrine. So then that way we can start to push that direction of giving Cirque air power in the future. Um, what was the other question, sorry? The last uh, the There was another one. There was a, he he stuck another question in there about. Also, will the uh, yeah also will the infect be able to group up in a large horde and charge barricades? That's coming on the AI cards. I don't like how the AI are intelligence wise right now, but I don't want to like 
open up too many cans right now. Like I'm, I'm t that's why the roadmap was laid out in the way it is. We're like, when we get to the infected AI, we're gonna spend like a good couple of weeks just redoing how they think about attacking, how they think about defense and defense. And at that point, then we're gonna just put it out experimental and have people submit save files to us and see what people have to say because like you figure it's one of those things where like I want people to submit like their Fort Knoxes. They're like they're unbeatable defenses. And then we archive all those. And then we start to deconstruct it from an AI standpoint. How would an AI be able to analyze these defenses, test and prod them without cheating and figure out like, okay, like how are we going to destroy my enemy? kind of deal for, for infected so yes that's something that we're looking at in terms of basically in the ai car is having the ability to synchronize attacks having the ability to know when they should retreat when they should stop sending people in because they're not making any progress uh and they need to like re-strategize whether it be come back with a huge group triple the size instead of just sending them in in small groups and getting cut down or break that group into two or three teams and then hit the same compound from three different sides like that kind of stuff. Use their numbers against you instead of just mindlessly just throwing themselves against your walls. Because the idea is Chelsea's a hive mind. So, as a commander, as she's slowly and surely starting to understand her power and her limitations, she should be able to be like, okay, this isn't working. Let's pull these infected back. Let's wait for some juggernauts. Let's get a Leviathan in the back door over here with the spitters, or with the, with the little guys, and so on and so forth, like that. So, that's the goal. Um, anyhow, back to you, Dermar. Alright, uh, Chad the Tactical. What a name. Oh. Anyway, any news for Chad the th Chad Thundercock? Oh. Any <laughs> well, that happened. Yeah. Any new spawn zones, such as out of buildings in highly infected zones, for example, enabling flanking for the infected, making street fights more dangerous and harder to approach. Wait, so he's asking for more, like, environmental uh, variables that cause the, the more variance in gameplay? I think so. I think that's how I understand his question. So, yes, our, our approach to that is adding in Apex, sorry, Apex, Chaos Destruction. Uh, we think, right now, as of the doing in the new vehicle AI, as part of that push, it's gonna be pushing the idea of having destruction in the world. Would it be concrete fences, wood fences, um, basically things in the world that would essentially think you, before you thought you were safe, now you're not. And now the juggernaut can go Kool-Aid man to that wood fence, or that, that uh that concrete enclosure that you had that you were using as like a static wall you know they can come through that is the idea you could blow it up via airstrikes grenades the, the javelin the small uh vehicles so the idea is that now like the battlefield is more dynamic is the push is the direction we want to go in to where you have to pay attention to like how much like ordinance you're exerting but at the same, because then you could negatively affect your defense posi defensive position by doing so. Uh, but then you also think about like, oh, there's a juggernaut coming. There's a wall there. He's not going around. He's going through that fence or he's going through that concrete wall. So now you have to think about your defenses a little more intelligently. You have to maybe think about having scouts that are at a higher vertical height so they can see behind the fence and they can give you more actionable intel of like, what is he doing? Are they grouping up over there? You know, like that kind of stuff, especially the Leviathan, where, he'll, where his swipe attack will be able to actually destroy debris in the direction we're going in with the, Apex, with the chaos destruction. Oh, I keep saying Apex. Apex is the old legacy version of destruction in the engine and, and chaos is the one that they use in Fortnite. That's the new one. Um, so yes, that is the direction we're going okay. into for dynamic destructible battlefield. Now, obviously, we're not going to iron harvest. We're not going to go to destroy entire skyscrapers, buildings, because technically, the engine would not take that too well. But when it comes to, like... Disappointment. Like, the, 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 yeah, when it comes to, like, the walls and the wood fences and, like, the small little, like, inherent... Like, it's, it's enough there to where it's going to definitely affect how you play the game. It's like when I was talking to someone in the general chat yesterday, is the game you play today 
will be completely different than the game you play in July. In terms of basically all the systems that are changing and being ad adapted and, and improved based off of user feedback and based off of what's on the roadmap and what's coming down the pipe for the vehicles. Because the vehicles are going to have a ripple effect from just the destruction element that will affect every other aspect of gameplay. And then you add in the new airstrikes we're putting in, well, the revamped visual airstrikes that have, you know, like the Thunderbolt sounds like a Thunderbolt, and they can actually have a, a the bur like machine gun run, but they also have a bombing run we're going to give you guys. So, like, there's going to be a lot more distinction in terms of, like, how these things affect the world. Uh, and yes, we've heard you guys about the bridges. We're going to be adding some kind of way in the Cirque and Doctrine section to check the health of the bridge by clicking on it or highlighting on it. And then potentially adding some more, uh, what's the word, resistance. So then that way it's not as easy to blow it up on accident. Because I, I hear that a lot. As people like blow up their bridges on accident when they're not even trying to. And it's really annoying. So yeah, I have heard you guys talking about that. I do, I do read. If I don't reply, I do read generally everything you guys say in every channel. Including Reddit, YouTube comments, and uh, even other people's YouTube videos. I, I scour the internet every day. So I do see everything you guys are saying, and I put them on a document to figure out, like, what are the priorities on a daily basis. And that sheet is updated daily, if not bi-daily, if there's nothing said that day. Uh, anyhow, back to you, Dermar. <laughs> the A town right now is only gonna be a call in. I knew that was coming. Yeah. Don't worry, it, it'll sound sexy. It'll 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 do the burr, but we're not gonna add that as a as a, as a controllable vehicle. Right now, we're gonna keep it purely to uh, jets long term that can be deployed from the assault carrier, and that's it. And then uh, that's way down the pipe, and that comes down to everything goes well. The stars align, uh, and then if we have some time, we'll sneak in a Harrier and a, and a Predator drone. drone. But that just that comes, I'm not, no promises. That might be later down the road. That's like a wish list item at this point for me, for the for the circuit doctrine stuff. Anyhow, back to what you were saying, Dervar. Uh, okay, so uh, Berry Cabbage, on that note. Uh, <laughs> will we be able to uh, pop infantry up and out of the M M2A3's rear top hatch, uh, this is usually done for additional rear and side protection against close closing attacks from infantry. Okay, like, what's the... I'm sorry, what is that? Is that a Bradley? M2A3, I have no idea. What is that? I feel kind of stupid right now. Is that, is that like, should I know what that is? That's the Bradley, that is the that's Bradley. The Bradley right? Okay. Okay, that's the, that's the abbreviation. Okay, um... Right now, the plan is is to make it the ultimate infantry support vehicle. But the idea is that like they're not going to be able to ride on the exterior, but you'll be able to fit a full complement of units in the back. But then it'll also have its offensive and defensive abilities that are just like there's no penalty for basically bringing a Bradley out to support your infantry, like the Striker, where you lose transport capacity. So. That's the direction we're going in, if that answers your question, hopefully. Bit of daylight. <clears throat> what else we got? Oh, I thought, I thought we lost you there, because you didn't, you, you didn't say anything else. Anyway, uh, Greek asks, uh, do you have any overhaul aesthetic nailed down for the zombies concept-wise, like which zombies first special in the, ga in the game currently is clo closest to what you imagine for the effect? <laughs> Where do you see that question? Uh, that's just below Barry Cabbage's question. Yes, I'll show you. Where's my mouse? Short, sweet, punchy, yes. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'll just pull up my concept art folder. Give me a second. I will share my screen with that one. Ignore my art background for a second. Let me just pull this over here. Ah, uh, yes, it's art. Yeah, it's art. 
So that's the general direction of the final infected. When we get, uh, my plan is to basically, like, right now they work conceptually, but they're supposed to augment and change the body to be more like coral reefs. So the idea is that, like, that's the direction we're going to be going in when we get, like, uh, I guess you could say a more influx of money going from co op. Because right now I'm trying to focus all of our resources and money on the gameplay and the vehicles and the things that we could do in house. And then. You know, once we get all of that situated, start contracting people on the outside that can do really good monsters, like Call of Duty level, zombies level, that can basically go in there and essentially design us some monsters like that. I mean, we even have, like, stuff like this for, like, the Guardians prototype. There was another one that I showed. This was an older one that was abandoned. Uh, we have concepts for basically, like, procedural infection growth on buildings we have concepts for basically yep. uh like stuff like the the uh stranger things the, the upside down world where basically like the idea would be is that as this biomass grows like in prototype it would essentially uh augment and change the uh oxygen and the uh like the atmosphere to be more hospitable to where the penguin virus comes from so the idea is that it's slowly but surely uh, changing it, kind of like World of the Worlds. Um, I mean, you can see the original version of the Infection Pod Towers, like, probably will be cleaning this up so you can more closely make out people. We kind of censored it back in the day because you can't even see, like, people's body parts. We'll probably go back to, like, the nude versions or whatever, kind of like what Rust does. Uh, when they just, well, whenever they show a trailer, they just blur it out. But you can see, like, we had a lot more graphic stuff back in the day in terms of, like, horror. Um, you guys, the spitter's done. The spitter is not going to change. If anything, well, we had a plan, a goal, is that long term we want to introduce some mutations. Where the idea would be is that this version of the spitter can cloak. That blow up guy uh, has a different ability that he does when he does. It's like, basically, like, uh, I guess you could call them elite classes, like in Halo, where different colors are different, like, like small cosmetic chains, changes, visualize, like, oh, this is a spitter, but he has an extra ability. And we wanted to pair them with lieutenants in that way. So it's something that we're going to see what we could do when we get to the infected lieutenant stuff, and the infected uh, side to see, like, can we do it budgetly, budget-wise, or do we need to wait a little bit longer? Like, you can see we have, like, visualizations of like different pods and cities and basically like how they would form over alleys so you had to burn away at the infection and clear it out now we implemented this about six months ago but then it blew up the engine so we ended up having to basically roll it all out take it all out and we're hopeful that the new uh psd generation tool that epic just shipped last week in 5.4 fixes the tech issues that we were running into where it was too much to just add to the world additively we needed some kind of way of baking h lots or lod's for these models live which is what they added remarkably in the last version of the engine which i'll show you guys what i'm talking about so for those that want to do their own research so they can kind of see what the heck i'm talking about i mean here's some old like pods they're all disgusting of course uh, let me forbidden see, is there jelly anything? Baby. Weapon? I said the forbidden jelly baby. Jelly baby. Yeah, early little guy concepts. Adorable. <laughs> Adorable. Uh, mm, that's probably not the word I'd use. Adorable, but wants to eat you for breakfast. Yeah, the forbidden, the forbidden gummy worm. And as you can break. see, you know, we do have some ideas for like traps. And basically other infected structures, but we're just kind of waiting until we have the budget to kind of execute on those. So these are just kind of sitting dormant in a folder until we get to that point. Because like you figure, we also had the idea that basically some of the people you'd come across in the world and there would be infection pods that you could like wake up, per se. And some of the reinforcements on the map would just be these infected that are put to sleep that would break out of their bubble when you entered a zone, when you pissed off the hornet's nest. So, like, there was an idea for those kind of things. These are all, like, items that we've had to kind of push off until conceptually we could do it from a visual standpoint. Um, 
but like you can see here's one of the examples of like how we wanted to do some pods and we just statically in the level. And if you basically like piss them off, they'd come out and say hello is the idea. But that's a matter of just kind of waiting until we have the budget to just kind of get those kind of things modeled and then redo how some of the spawning works. So yes, there'll be some that come in via the pods. Well, there'll be some that are in alleys and streets that are just sleeping. Kind of like the Zack Snyder movie. Uh, I can't remember the name. The one with the gambling thing I don't, in Las Vegas. Where the idea is that like, they're just dormant and they're waiting for stimuli. Otherwise, they just, they just, they just shut down, basically. And, and, and conserve their energy. Um, I think that's everything we have for the infected. Because we have all these other things, but you guys can't see those because those are secret. Um, like here, oh, actually, I can't show this. This is Winters' final aesthetic review. So, like, when we get a character modeler, that's what we're going to be contracting out to get, like, the final BDU base design. Can't it's more inspired. Right. So, it'll be based off of, like, Secret. between... Because we're going to be using the Assault and Winters' outfit to kind of help inform the design of the final Spec Ops, the Sniper. You know, then they make them more, like, of, a, like, a unit. And they're not as, like, G.I. Joe like Cobra, where everyone's just so distinctly different and they, they look, look like they came out of a cartoon. Um, let me see. Oh, right here. Oh, I can show these. So basically, um, this is what we're going to basically be, like, as we do the campaign, this will answer your question for the Infected Extended, is that you figure Chelsea's appearance will change in pandemic mode depending on when you get shredder rounds and how much of a threat you are. So the idea is that um, right now she doesn't have a model change, but we're doing logic changes behind the scenes, but you guys don't know she's getting stronger and how big her radius is. So the idea is uh, long term, we'll have like different phases of her that, that are from the campaign when it gets created, they'll trickle in to the pandemic is the idea. Where, like, she becomes more, like, of a threat. Oh, that's just our character mood. Like, our character sheet. How we figure out how we're going to design stuff. This is campaign stuff, though. This is stuff you're going to see in her house as family portraits. When you're basically, like, exploring her house. So we were, like, designing all the characters. Figuring out, like, okay, how does she look in her nurse scrubs? How does she look after she's been infected and she starts killing people on the city? And then just kind of starting to figure out like what her personality is and how her how her visuals change over time. What do her parents look like? If you if you guys have read read the book or watched the anthology, then you'll see like some of the connections here and there of like we're kind of like trying to build up a whole mythos, the character, the backstory, and the world. So that way, when we do get to during the campaign, it's just okay, let's do it. Like we have everything on paper, we have all the concepts. It's just a matter of just shifting over all the people to work on that instead of pandemic at that point. Um, I don't think there's anything else that's relevant for the infected that I can show. Uh, let me see. Yeah, no, because everything else is just vehicles and then other characters from the campaign that you guys can't know about. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, ah. Nothing left. like some good old secrets. Exactly. Anyway, um, back to your questions. What else have we got? Uh, let's have a look here. Just trying to keep track of where I was up to. Uh, going off of this question, will you be adding the ability for soldiers to enter and clear buildings in infected zones, like there could be some zombies inside and all in... In order to really clear zones, you need to clear the buildings too. Having hidden nests inside would be cool too. Just imagine the zombies pouring out of the buildings. Question. So I actually have a personal bias against this. I hate games that introduce too much RNG. Like, in, uh, I, might, I might get some flack for this, but I hate systems where like you put units into a building and then they simulate a fight and then you have no control. And then it comes down to the stat games of like, if anyone's played those Tour de War matches where you do an auto match, and you know you're going to win, but the auto match system is like, you're going to lose. But then if you fight it yourself, you win. Nine out of ten times. So it's one of those things where like I don't like auto match systems. So 
to me, what I showed you guys earlier when it comes to the infection growth, I believe the best way of doing that would just have the infection growth appear on the outside exterior of the building based off of those new engine enhancements that they've added. And basically just have it to where you have to burn down or physically damage the building on the exterior to pacify that building as a spawn point for infection. It's kind of gamey, but I'd rather that and the infected run out the door, jump off the windows, jump out of the windows, jump off of the roof and attack you, and then you send some guys in and then a system that's automated purges the people inside like you lose people and they lose people i hate those systems personally maybe it's like an unfair bias that i haven't seen a game that does it to where it's fair at least from what i feel that's that's from my personal bias towards it um but maybe there is a game that's fair that does this i don't know but as far as i know i have played total war for the last 20 years it scares me <laughs> it's just some automated systems um so, for K9's question... Play Total War 3? Play Total War Warhammer 3 with me, then? What? That doesn't have interiors. <laughs> it's so random, but yes, we gotta play that. Well, I gotta buy it on Steam next time it's on sale. But, going to K9's questions, we experimented yeah, with that. The very first version of our game, actually, had interiors for them. But the problem that we found is that we had to exaggerate the size of the interiors to where the island size inflated it, like it ballooned. So what we did as a compromise is that we made it to where there's like 10 to 12 hollowed out structures that we're going to use like in pandemic mode. Like warehouses, they're like a, a grocery store, there's a gun store. And their models are their their interiors are modeled, and we're waiting until we interject strategic resources, and we're waiting until we can kind of go back and in implement the strategic resource with the dynamic civilian groups, so they operate outside of those camps sometimes instead of building outside. They'll be in a supermarket, kind of like Project Zomboid. So we do have some structures, twelve in the game right now that are hollowed out. Some of them you can enter, some of them you can't. And it's one of those things where, like, we're, we kind of, like, earmark to kind of change some of the structures and we're waiting till the programming catches up to where we can actually, like, get the AI so they know, like, hey, we're not going to build a settlement outside. We're just going to have, like, six guys inside this thing. And then, like, there's going to be a barricade on the door and that kind of stuff. But then there's mechanics we got to put in for clearing the barricade. So, or, like, being able to open it so they can let you in. So it's one of those things where it's a lot of moving parts. So we've hauled it out, and we're going to come back to that in the future as, like, a civilian management kind of polish thing. I don't even know where we're going to get to that at this point, because we have so many things on our, on our roadmap at this point. And I don't want to add too much in front of co-op to the point where people start to, like, lose their mind. Because we've already been pulling co-op back and back and back and back and back. So it's like... I'm trying to just kind of earmark the things that are like mission critical, which is what I feel is on the roadmap right now and not add anything too crazy in head of it, even though it'd be great to add and then do the co-op and then we can come up with the excuse to do it to add in a couple of sub systems and sub features after the co-op before we do the campaign, maybe to make people happy. Cause then, once we do the campaign, we're going to go radio silent for a good period of time while we're just, working on the campaign because we're not going to want to spoil anything. It'll be a complete paradigm shift for like how we've talked to you guys before because it's going to be like we're not going to be posting campaign stuff all the time because we're going to probably just work on it in secret, show some teasers here and there, and then just let you guys enjoy all the content we've released up to this, which is the co-op and all the other systems we've baked in. Um, anyhow, back to you, Dervar. Spring cleaning on my computer. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Jagger asks a question of why do the Mark 38s on the carrier don't work? They don't shoot. The Mark 38s aren't shooting. They're point defense and they have very low range. They're half the range of the sea waves. Uh, to get them to shoot, you would have to have someone roughly within a screen. Yeah, one. They can only shoot roughly about a, a screen's distance to one and a half screen's distance away. 
Um, so double check that one. Uh, and if it's and if you still feel like it's not working, make a bug report and tag me in the forums, the C, the forum CP or Discord. Uh, next question, Dervar. Oh, for the people that are talking about the co-op in the general chat, I completely agree with you. It's just I'm at a point where I want to make the game as, I guess you could say, fleshed out as possible. Where, like, it's like if when your friends do eventually come over and play it, there's so much to do, but they get lost in it. Where it's like, it's not like, oh, we get bored of this in like six to eight hours and we never play it again. It's like, okay, that was so fun. Let's do another campaign. And this time, let's do evacuations. Let's do Umbrella. Let's do In the Middle. You know what I mean? Like, that's my goal. Is I want to have as many systems and as much polish and as much bugless content in there. So that way, when co op is implemented, it's like there's just a plethora. There's just so much to do that it's just you lose your goddamn mind. In terms of like when we actually do do the code, which is why I've added it at the end of 1.3 instead of just doing it now. Um, plus, it makes it easier on the team as well because if we were to put co-op in now, that increases the everything that we do now becomes twice as complicated to implement and maintain because now we have to test it from a single-player standpoint to a multiplayer standpoint, which is why I'm trying to get all the framework in, all the systems that I've earmarked are needed to kind of like get the game to fire at all caliber and then at that point spend the time and just polish switch all that over to like the new co-op of like you know how we do it and then that way it's you know we don't have to do a major revamp in the future that like takes a long time takes as, twice as longer uh, okay uh, what do you got there bar uh someone asked what was with that okay <laughs> <laughs> anyway, huh? um, someone someone asked in the in the YouTube chat, GeForce Experience support. GeForce Experience. What is that? It's uh, it's the new streaming thing from uh, GeForce. They stream games, so it doesn't use your computer itself. It uses their servers. You talking about the the? You talking about like the, the streaming games over the internet? I don't the know. cloud service for Nvidia? I don't. I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm asking Gforce for clarification. Where did you see this? In YouTube. We already have it on there. I checkmarked the box that allows anyone that has GeForce Now to, to stream the game. It should just work, Shepard. All I have from control of Valve side is I check mark a box and I uh, and I and I agree, and I sign a agreement with Nvidia, and then it should just show up when you log in with your Steam library as a game that you can stream on the GeForce app. As far as I know, I've never tested it myself, but I just assumed everything was working. So I don't have that service. Uh, double check with that with, with me, Shepard, and if you're having issues, reach out to Dark on Discord. So that way we can figure out what's going on, and worst case, I can elevate it and make a ticket with Valve, or maybe we're misunderstanding what you're asking, even. Um, what else have we got, Dervar? Okay, thanks. We've got a uh, familiar stranger asking a meme question. I'm not sure oh, what that means. Oh, no. Uh, Will units have a hidden dance animation like in StarCraft? Does every unit in StarCraft have that? Uh, I think just about every unit has, has that. I know if I, Michael had his way, he would. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he'll sneak it in. Because right now, I just want to take away resources from the main game. That would be like... Honestly, that would be something that we would do when we, when we leave early access. Like, that would be like the icing on the cake. We have nothing else to do. We're bored. Let's just throw some people in a mocap that are bored and just do some things or whatever. So, for right now, no. Potentially in the future, maybe. Um, back to you, Dervar. Does Dawith have questions? Is. What was that? I said, does Dawith have questions? 
Does Dawith have questions? I am searching for them. Someone tag me. Uh, but did, you, but did you discuss adding different factions of AI that will interact, that we can interact or ally with, such as police, fire, and National Guard survivors? Asking, because buildings you recently added, such as the police station in the state's region, are yes open for job first over those features I asked you about. What is there? <sighs> uh, I think the question was about the AI, like the police, fire, National Guard, and whatnot. Okay, what is the question so I can read it? Uh, here, I'll just post it to you. There you go. It says C and DM. Uh, okay, let me just copy and paste this into the channel so that way people can know what I'm referencing. Uh, okay, I was not here for the beginning of the podcast, but did you discuss anything adding different factions of AI that can interact or ally with, such as police, fire, and National Guard survivors, asking because of buildings you recently added, such as the police station in the state's region. Oh, yes, I prefer co-op first over those features I asked about. So you answered your own question. We're going to do the co-op first. And then at that point, I'm going to use the factions and the, and factions and the uh, campaign card in 1.4 to just do what you're talking about. So that'd be post co op. Um, because you figure my goal is to get it to where it's an active simulation of the world, a city, a deteriorating city. I, I keep referencing this every time, but like the second Resident Evil movie with like uh, Nemesis, uh, the cheesy ones. But basically, those. That, that's what I'm trying to get to the point of emulating, where it's like you start, you have a lot of parties in play. You have to figure out who you're going to ally with, who you're going to stay out of the way and stay neutral with, or who you're just going to outright kill. And you know, obviously those three things will change as you're playing the game, because then people might betray you in X, Y, and Z. So that's the goal. But you figure like pushing like a more sophisticated advanced factions is now being pushed with the campaign um, after we do co-op. Because in that way, I can get more concept artists online. I can get more character modelers on the team from the added co-op influx of cash and be able to invest that in basically getting them like fully fleshed out. Oh, here, I'll just show you guys. So so you guys know like what we're doing. Boop. And then... Boop. And then I will go to the... Hold on, I gotta think. It should be under... No, it's not in the Natalie's folder. There's a... Hold on, bear with me. Oh, factions, I'm stupid. That's not it. I mean, you can see the concepts for them. But they were really early, and we want to clean them up and modernize them a little bit. But... What I'm looking for is the structures. Like, we already have, like, concepts and all that for them. We showed these off a while ago. It's just more so of just, they take a while to make. And then it would take away from every other aspect of the game we're working on right now. So it's, they've been earmarked for the future. Of like, you know, god damn it, I, I hate this mouse. Remember people, don't buy a wireless Steel Series mouse. So, um, you know, like modded technicals and toes and MGs. And then we got into the police of like their t three tiers that would be able to counter their logo, their police choppers. Their command vehicles, their patrol cars, their medium tier armor, medium tier, and then there was a couple other ones that I'd have to fish out and find. But you figure it's one of those things where we're sitting on all these these concepts until we have the resources and the people to be able to do them correctly. Because in my mind, they still need more fleshing out. Because we were planning on having it to where the police was like. 
they play like uh, they would operate out of like SWAT vans and SWAT vehicles, and the anarchists were operating out of like interior vehicles and you know stuff like that. So it was basically one of those things where it was like there was going to be a huge deviation in terms of how they played. Let me see if I can show you. Ah, here we are. These are really early, so like, yeah. But like, these are just generally ideas that we had for like Natalie's faction, the anarchists. Well, they just kind of erect and set these up over like compounds and areas next to buildings. And then... I think you're showing YouTube. What? YouTube hasn't seen any of this, I don't think. Is it, have they? No, my shit was just frozen. Okay, because you're giving me a heart attack. Ignore me. So, like, you figure, like, everything's concepted. If that was a doc, that doesn't... I gotta delete that. <laughs> We're never gonna use that. <laughs> never mind, you didn't see the doc. The doc doesn't exist. It's in the trash can. Uh, you didn't see that. Don't, don't start asking about votes. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't see anything. <laughs> you didn't see anything. It was, so, it was so you all can, a myth. Yeah, so you can see, like, we were kind of planning out, like, triage centers and basically, like, I implementing in, like, m medical services and basically stuff like that for, like, each faction based off of what would make sense. It's just all that's coming in 1.4 now at this point. Because in that way, I can get those concepts updated. I can hire a bunch of more contractors from the influx of people that are going to be buying the game uh, from the co-op. Because we already know it's, it's going to be a force multiplier. We already know it's going to generate us a lot of money. We just don't want to do it before we're ready in terms of having the framework and the infrastructure and the bugs gone to where it would just be a shit show in terms of basically just kind of like people being mad. So, yeah. Um, anyhow, back to you, Durvar. Let's get some more questions in before we run out of time. Um, just have a look through now. That question that you just answered. More talks about co op. Anything on YouTube? Nope. Uh, well. About co op. Play, uh, players there will have separate resources and unit limits, or, or it's going to be the same altogether. The player, the host sets it. So the host sets the rules of does everyone share money, or does everyone get separate money? And they're basically the game master. So they, they set all the rules, they set what people can and cannot do, they set how much population is available, and then based off of that, you guys all tackle it as a shared circ. In terms of basically like, I guess the closest one I can think of is Solaris Co-op. So the, that's the clip where you all play as the same faction, group, unit, whatever, but you're all working towards a common goal. Or maybe you're working against each other, I don't know, maybe your friends are dicks. So <laughs> it just depends on however you want to play. I, I know. Uh, I know that uh, I, I am definitely going to screw you over in, in in the game. That's for sure. Thanks for reminding me never to play co-op with you. <laughs> <laughs> I will do everything in my everything in my power to make sure that your life is miserable playing co-op with me. But I'll but I'll just fuck off on the corner as an operator as Mike will. We'll just ignore you as you as you burn in, in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll literally just go into operator mode. We're just gonna hide in the corner of the map and just find a, a hill to look at while our base burns and be like, "Wow, sucks for not that guy over there controlling that." I'll be like, "Where the fuck are you guys?" <laughs> oh, you'll you'll see us on the you'll see us in the world. We'll just be those two guys on the ro on the on the roof just watching, just like, "Yeah, thank God we're not over there." Ten out of ten. <laughs> Just drop a strafing run on top of you? Dick. That's a good <laughs> question, though. We haven't even discussed if you could friendly fire your own other other friendly operators. I guess we could yes. make it to where you could. That'd be horrible, yeah. though. That'd be like hell divers, hell. So then it'd be like, if you're not paying attention to what air snakes you're calling in, you could kill an entire operator team that you have on the ground of players, and then you just hear them cursing at you. Speaking of hell divers, we definitely got to play the other two. I'm waiting until they add more content. Well, they have. I... They've added new, two new weapons. That's not enough content. <laughs> That's good enough for me. I'm waiting until they add more content. But anyway, what else did we got? Good questions when we wrap this up. Uh, let's have a look here. 
Uh, does the Abrams have a cruise system? Yes. It's not yeah. in right now what you saw, but it's going to be in on the final. Treasonous talk. Uh, I think we're just devolving into hell divers now. Um, uh -huh. Let's have a look see here. I'm not seeing any more questions by the look of it. Okay. Just, just having a look. Tick me a hot second. Just make random noises. Does anyone have any hard questions they want to throw at me before we before we disappear for to like back into our hole? We got three people typing at the moment. Yeah. Is there po is there possibility to have camouflage for soldiers as well, just like on the vehicles, the infantry too, for uniforms? No, too? not yet. Not until they're finalized. I think we got that question earlier, but that's gonna come basically later on. Uh, what's Lava's question? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen any question from Lava. You got one from K9? Uh, are you planning on adding different resources such as food, water, and power? Notice that Power Plant Island could be a sub-objective to give power to the city. Huh. Okay. So, to break... Silence! <laughs> So, to break that down, we have no plans at this time to add other currencies uh, to Cirque. We want to keep it simple as you give the civilians supply, and then they spend that supply universally based off of whatever they're doing. So it doesn't become too cumbersome in the management aspect of the game. We want to make it to where basically your only resources are the DNA and the cash. And for Chelsea, it's the population. And one, how about, yeah, it's basically the population for her and the amount of DNA that she farms based off of her research tree that we'll get into later down the road. But the idea is that we want to keep it very, very straightforward when it comes to that. Um, let me see. Power Plant Island is being reserved as a strategic resource where a circle can tap into it for basically energy. So. That is going to be a strategic resource where it, you know, gives you the power of like 20 generators would be the idea. So you hold that, you connect your power grid to it, and then from there, it would essentially like that's that's part of the strategic resources that are coming later down the pipe during the circuit doctrine stuff. The first strategic resource you guys will gain will be the airfields to bring in the Abrams, the MLRS, and the Bradley. We have the C5 Galaxy and the, into the two airfields. And then shortly after that, we'll trickle in other strategic resources like gun stores, hospitals, and um, gun stores, hospitals, police stations, and that in the source of power. So that way it'll give you a reason to get out there and actually conquer and build outposts and build in different parts of the map besides just having isolationism. Where you just sit on Angel Island and just count your ducks until you launch a massive attack. And yeah, now you're like, okay, well, if I'm only on Angel Island, I don't get these resources. The dynamic civilian groups are going to get them, use them all up. Maybe I should build some gates and close it all off for myself and hoard it. You know, or basically Chelsea will take over it, build all over there. And then at that point, uh, you know, you have to kill them just to reclaim the resources because Chelsea won't use them, but the factions, the civilians will. So it kind of, besides the power, the power will just run forever. Uh, we haven't really, we haven't really talked about making it to where you can destroy the power station as making giving it a health bar. Maybe that'll come later down the road as we implement, kind of like a, as a balance thing where Chelsea can deny you it if she like sends in people to destroy it somehow. But We'll get to that later on when it comes down to it. Because like right now, we want to keep the strategic resources simple. You go to a location, you take control of it, and then it gives you an incentive for holding it, whether it be ammo, healing, uh, gasoline, gas stations, or basically power. Uh, anything else we have for questions? Power. Uh, we so uh, before we cover Mama's question, I do want to I do want to uh, mention here: if I don't cover your question the first time, do not be hesitant to ping me. 
uh, do at me in the chat. That'll highlight your question so I do see it because some questions do get buried. Indeed. Um, so yeah, so just just going off of what uh, Lama said about her uh, about them needing to post it a third time. Um, yeah, just That's fine. if I don't okay. see it the first. Yeah, I I don't mind getting getting added in the chat. It just helps keep things a little bit more. Like what I would do, is I would just chaotic. add him and then share a link to your original question. Yeah. Boom. Um, uh, anyone yeah. have yeah, any questions? Uh, yep. Away? So Lama Lama's got a question here. Will Garrison queuing uh, queue thing work with civilians he heading to holding cells and evac choppers? Are you assuming possession of those civilians? I would assume so. I, I just need a little bit of clarification here. Because it will not work unless you're assuming position, possession of them. Well, do we assume possession of the civilians when we evac them? No. Then we're calling them to evac? No. Then I would, I would say no. Yeah, because like you figure all of that's automated. The holding cell one, that that's that's us taking position with the civilian though when we shove a civilian in the holding cell. Yeah, but that's all automated. I mean you could assume possessions and put someone in manually, but that's inefficient. I mean you could, uh, but uh I don't know why you would. Am I missing something? No, no. I don't I don't, I don't I don't think could... people would I don't think people would want to manually uh, put in like hundreds of people in the holding cells by themselves. That's why we we did it via automated. Now, apparently, yes, you are. What's a what's better than a bread box? <laughs> Jesus. Guys are better than a bread box. I mean, I don't know what that means. I'm, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm terrified. What better than sure bread boxes, a, I guess, guys. I'm I'm not sure I'm, I'm not sure if that's a compliment or an insult. I don't know either way. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, Nana, can you that's can you elaborate? Uh alt vehicle ammo like tank canister shot and shotgun shell. I mean I think you covered the tank different shots for the tank in that last one. Yeah, I don't I don't think he don't, says we don't wanna know. You don't wanna know. There, but yeah, someone in the YouTube was asking about the canister shot for the tank. What about the what about the, the vehicle ML? Sorry. Oh, you mean like resupplying vehicle ML from the strategic resources, or what is he asking? Uh, no, the changing the ammo type, like canister shot for the tank. Not currently. That's more of a wish list item. I mean, we will soon. I'm just kind of scanning through some more. Let's see if there's any more questions. Yeah, I was waiting for Mana to elaborate because I don't understand, fully understand what she's uh, explaining. Well, well, Mana, Mana said, uh, "Yes, you are." So I'm assuming that you've hit the nail on the head. I may be. Oh, okay. He has a good one right there for the helicopters. So that's coming after we do the ground vehicles. So we're going to do this new vehicle AI. We're going to do a test. We're going to port over the old ones. Then we're going to add in the ones that I showed. The MRS was the only one that I didn't show today. And then we're going to, and then the next thing is going to be tackling the helicopters. So we'll do the same thing where we'll convert over the little bird and one other helicopter potentially that has a different flight module, different flight type. And then we'll basically from there put it out there to like test because the helicopters do need a lot of finessing in terms of how they move. And I do need some kind of faked physics for when they're like flying, but they're not as like rigid. So yeah, that is on our agenda for the circuit doctrine stuff right after we finish wrapping up the ground vehicles. Uh, uh, what else do we got? Chat us if there's any customization for the uh, M1. Five or minutes, Thurivar. Five minutes. He said his customization for the Bradley. Yes, you'll have a active denial system. You will be able to customize it to smoke canisters or active denial. You'll be able to change it to different armor plating, 
based off of the type of enemy that you're fighting, whether it be like this little like, goddamn, what was it? It was like this little like cage armor, and then it was like this like reactive like little square blocks. I forget the actual technical name. It was, ah, okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? Dimitri? Yeah, Dimitri no, Dimitri right. yeah, yeah, those. Yeah, no, Dimitri was the one that picked them out. But the idea is that you'll have two different types based off of like what you're fighting. Uh, anything else? Armor. We got four minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, Lama just uh, specified right now civilians don't seem to respect the size of the vehicle. They just pick one up and run to it until it's full, and then all the uh, all the ones running to it swap targets. Question was if the new behavior can be applied to that so that uh, so their destination choice is a bit smarter. Size of the vehicle. So I'm assuming the Chinooks that pick them up. Are you talking about the Chinooks, just to clarify? Well, they're talking about evacuation, so... I mean, I'm just making sure. Chinooks in holding areas. They don't. They move based off of whatever gets filled. Then they touch it, and then whatever can be filled gets transferred. And then the other ones have to find somewhere else to go. That's just how yeah, it's currently they're... programmed. I think they're asking if the new be new queuing behavior can be added to the civilians. So they queue the... Let me think about that. Queue the destination. Okay, yeah, I got it. Yeah, they're, they're asking if the civilians can be set to queue... Um... Their destination. Yeah, I don't know about that. I gotta double check for that one. Let me um, let me double check on that one. I don't have an answer yet, but I'll get back to you later tonight about that one. I'll just tag you in the general chat. Make that gentleman note. All right, what else do we got? We got uh, three minutes. I think we're out of time. Oh no, three minutes. Three. Hello, one, two, or three. Oh, oh my. Fresh. Mouse hates me. Uh, I gotta see medic back. Oh, they're asking to see the medic back. Okay. Huh? I oh, didn't. Did you say you got the medic? Because there are. Uh, Wes game is asking if the medic's gonna. If we're gonna see the medics back. The medics. The medics are already in the game. Let's not compute. Yeah, yeah the medics. Are, the medics. One. The medics are in the medical station. The medics were moved to the medical station. They're in their own building now. Yeah, the medic. Is we. It? it was in a patch note. It was hidden. I don't blame you, bro. But basically, we moved it over to the medical station in preparation for the DNA research tree. Because we wanted to, because we, long term we're going to be adding a medic hub as well. So we were trying to basically diverse it, like, like, better branch off and give the Cirque building more purpose and gameplay. Uh, besides, you build a medical station and it just heals your units. It actually builds units. And it's going to build a, a medical hub V um, as well. So, yeah. Uh, any questions, Thurmar? Uh, is there a possibility to get raid missions in buildings like the division for the third person in the future? Raid missions. In pandemic? Got one. Uh, I would assume so. Does it matter if it's does it matter if it's only in pandemic, or did you want it in general? I mean, prototype it in pandemic and see if we can expand it from there, but... Because remember, there's only 12 building interiors, that's incredibly limited. As we figure, yeah. what we were going to be doing, and we talked about this in general chat earlier... Thinking... Do I have the pictures? Do I have the technology? Yes, I do. Okay, hold on. I will just show you what we're going to do. That's actually a really good question for the Vajra as well. Hold on. I must hunt down that picture and show them. Uh, let me just open this, open this. I'm just going to show you guys what we're going to do with the operator when we get to that card. 
this might open up a can of worms of questions, but... A <laughs> can of worms of questions. indeed Okay, so I have opened up a uh, share screen. Share screen, I will share you. And then I will, let's see, I'll save this to my desktop. Don't you do it, mouse. If you malfunction, I'm going to find you. Uh, that'll probably be a question for next time, because I think Zaj is going to be the last question for tonight, if you want. Okay. Hold on, I'm fighting my computer right now. Like, let's throw it down. Okay, there we go. So basically, this is the operator that we were prototyping a while ago. And this is basically like a customization window that we were setting up. The idea is that we're going to be bringing over these maps from this prototype for Tusepius for free as a trading ground to basically upgrade your uh, operator outside of pandemic mode. We want to make the operators to where they're a persistent hero, like in Call of Duty, but the idea is that you can level them up in multiple activities and then use them in pandemic or use them in, in side excursions. So when we get to the uh, operator card, it's going to be a shit ton in terms of basically like full out weapon customization, being able to change out sockets, being able to change out magazines, having a leveling system, having different uh, skins and cosmetics, and then having different maps that you can play that essentially will allow you to kind of like farm out your operator basically. So like, here's another prototype of like a UI. I showed this in general chat the other day because people were asking about it. And then like what you saw in the GIF was like an early mock-up, but like these are like the more final UIs that we were just kind of earmarking in terms of like how the operator is going to work. And the idea is that like these operators that you play in third person are also RTS heroes. So you can build a deck of operators that are like your squad leaders, your commanders, and then you supplement them with like your standard soldiers that the Cirque has. Uh, kind of like if anyone here has played Battle for Middle Earth 2, or Battle for Middle Earth 1, where they had the hero creation system, I fucking love that game, where essentially you could like have like Gundorian, Gundorian armies, but then you could also like build your own like custom hero that would like lead your people, basically. Um, let's see if I can open this. So that's the idea. It's basically giving you guys a couple of free game modes that you guys can play in third person to grind them out and level up their weapons, or you could just grind them out in pandemic mode. So it's like some free content that's coming down the road just for people like being so patient or whatever. Um, I can actually show you guys how the operator is going to play to wrap this up. Then we'll take that last question. And then me and Derv are going to run to the hills. So, and probably play a game. Jump off. So let me open up our prototype session. This is the first time anyone's actually seen this outside of the Patreon supporters and the people that asked to play test it in the announcement that we put up six months ago. So if you, so the, some of the people in this, I think two people in this room have probably have seen it, and then everyone else has never seen it before. Because uh, you guys are new to the Discord or just new to the YouTube thing. But here, let me, uh, let me open this up and I will show you the content we're going to be pulling over. So we have like these different stages that we've been prototyping and kind of building out for Horde mode. And for a, uh, hold on, I'm blind, blind, they say. So let me open up stage two. So we just have different stages you guys can play for fun. Oh, this one's not the master. Basically like different stages that we've been kind of prototyping for you guys to kind of play. We're going to bring over and just kind of give them a facelift in the future when we do the operator card. And the idea is that they're like little like time trial maps, kind of like Resident Evil 4 Mercenaries. Well, you can just kind of run around and fight people to the death. And then we were also testing the co-op code here. That's going to be used in Cepheus protocol. So we were basically using it as like a stress test to figure out like what we would have to change in Cepheus protocol. 
from a coding standpoint. Oh my god, I'm blind today. So if I open up this bloody map, you'll see. You're basically you're getting cod zombies. That's that be a sort of call. So it's the simplest way of explaining it with like four player co op. So let me just build the path. I haven't this project hasn't been opened in like four months. Because we prototyped it, we built it out. We originally were gonna do it as a separate and then just give everyone like a discount that bought Zephyrus Protocol by a huge margin. And they were like, fuck it, why would we separate it? Let's just make it free, put it into the base game, and just do what Call of Duty does, where you just have multiple like sub games you can launch. Or like Fortnite, where you get like a bunch of different activities to play in the base game and your progression is linear across all of them. So once this bloody runs, I'll be able to show you guys. Come on, little Timmy, you can do it. I'm about to just cancel it. The problem is that it's shader compiling at the same time as running a map check. And that is always cumbersome. Okay, I'm just going to stop the build. Oh, let me just go over here. I should have just been more patient and just let it run, but... Oh my god, my mouse is fighting me again. Bear with me, gentlemen. Let me just close it down. And then let me just reopen it. And then this time I'm just going to go into the other map. It already has everything fully computed and working. So we can expedite this because I'm pretty sure people want to move on with their day. So... Again, keep in mind, like this is like later down the road. This is like after we finish the doctrines, after we finish the DNA research tree, after we do, uh, maybe before we do the AI. I haven't figured that part out yet. Because um, originally the idea was after DNA and doctrines, this is the next on the agenda. And then we're doing a new AI to like, so that way we can program the AI based off of all the new systems that are in the game. I'm just going to load into this map. Just to demonstrate. Oh, wait. Shit. The people on YouTube can't hear the audio. Um, hold on, people on YouTube. We're coming home. Let's see. So let me just do audio capture. And then I would map that to game. And then that way they could hear the game. The people on Discord can already hear it. I think. So the idea is this is what we're going to be porting over, which is obviously a very early prototype. Where we were just kind of trying to figure out. And then, uh, by the way, we're, uh, stuff that we learned from this prototype is coming over to Cepheus in terms of active dismemberment. We saw that I shot off that guy's leg, and now he's going to crawl. And then he's going to eventually bleed out and die. So, like... Oh my god, my mouse doesn't stop breaking to so like jump off the building. So you can see that like we added live dismemberment to something that we were kind of prototyping here. And then launch here and watch. What? <laughs> huh? What's going on? You had to be there. Okay. So like you see I shot off his arm. And then we'll be adding in melee weapons to the stairs that infected as well. This is something that me and Michael are working on as a pet project to kind of bring over the Cepheus protocol. So if I shoot his arm, if I can aim correctly, god damn, I'm in god mode right now, but here, let me just spawn back in again. This is bad. Let me just find someone that has a melee weapon. Is that we'll be bringing it open to where you can actually disarm them, like in Resident Evil 4. Which is obviously inspired from Resident Evil 4, in terms of the combat and how it works. From the remake. So I shot off his arm and he dropped the melee weapon. That will actually work in gameplay. Where the idea is that you figure you'll be able, your RTS units and your um, operators will be able to shoot their arms to essentially disarm them. Uh, so there's that. Um, I think you figure I'll just show you guys the other one before we wrap this up. Both of these will be coming when we do the operator card. It is just free content, which is going to migrate over and port. So you'll just have like a new section of the base main menu where you just go to like operators. And then you'll be able to just play it. 
That's why the operator tab is grayed out. Um, so when this bloody loads, I will show you the horde map that we created for prototyping that as well. Cause yeah, whenever it freaking loads. This is obviously part of what I was saying the day ago, a day ago on general chat, as I didn't want the operator to be a gimmick. But at the same time, we wanted to basically see how far we could like prototype and test other mechanics to bring into the RTS, like the live dismemberment, like the disarming of enemies by shooting their limbs, the bleed out mechanic that will affect RTS and operator alike, where if you shoot someone's arm off or their leg, they're going to bleed out, essentially, uh, die horribly. Um, is it opening? Okay, that's just fun. There must be a pop-up somewhere asking me to acknowledge this. Uh, I maybe not. Maybe it's just acting silly because I haven't opened this thing in so long. That it's like it must have so many shaders to compile. Let me check my CPU utilization. Bear with me. Yeah, that's what it is. My CPU is at thirty percent, so it must be doing some kind of yeah. It's doing shader compilations. Yeah, it's running the open level. It's just taking a while. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, we'll just fill the air with uh, mumble jumble. So, yeah, that answers your question. Is that basically this is what I kind of showed off in general chat. This is what we're going to be adding when we get to the operator. Along that, we'll be adding in a leveling system. Where basically, as you get XP, the level right now that you see in this prototype just unlocks weapons. And then the weapons have a level. And then that unlocks attachments for those weapons that unlock skins for those weapons. Um, and then the idea is that, uh, you know, the level for the character will also have skill points in the final version, the Cepheus protocol version, that will essentially allow you to allocate, like in Skyrim, what you can put into different attributes to basically, like, make a character really good at melee. Make him really good at shooting, make him really good at sniping. Like, you can kind of, like, I shouldn't have said shooting. I should have said, like, subtypes of, like, shooting. Where, like, SMG, shotgun, snipers, taking damage. So, like, there will be a one for health. There will be a one for infection resistance. So then that way, like, you can build, like, a juggernaut character. You know, where it's like he has a big gun and then he can take a lot of damage. So he just runs around and just mows people down. Like, that, that's, you know, that kind of stuff. So, anyhow, I'm going to show this and then I'm going to wrap it up was the last question that Derivar had. So this was the other prototype that we built that you guys will be getting when we do the operator stuff where it's a, it's a four player uh, horde mode. But the idea is essentially you kill infected that come one of three ways. I'm just going to press this little uh, gib, this like little arm here. It's going to skip the countdown. A little alarm is going to go off. And then the infected are going to jump into the map and try and kill me and then if they don't uh, then uh, if I ha go and hide somewhere they'll go run and try and destroy a barricade this is really awkward my mouse just died again so uh, yeah I think I'm gonna like pause it and I'm gonna go grab my other mouse hold on it should be right here I'm gonna take that back to Best Buy after this Bro, goddamn the AMA mouse. Throw I'm going to Best Buy after this AMA, and I'm gonna go complain about like this mouse keeps dropping. The key wireless keyboard is perfect, but the wireless uh, Steel Series mouse I bought screws me constantly. Anyhow, let me just uh, re no, readjust my uh, desk here, so then that way you guys can see uh, what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna resume. Oh no, this feels great. And then you can use money, buy a turret. And then you can see like on the last 10, it just shows a little meter there. And it's like, hey bro, this is where I'm hiding. And then you can buy a mine. Didn't activate, I'm gonna go cry. But that one will. Did I explode? Oh, <laughs> the Niagara effect had to shader compile. But the problem with being in the editor is that that's why it froze and hits right there. Is it compiles shader live when the action actually occurs for some Niagara shaders if you haven't seen it on this installation of the game. So that's why uh, you didn't get to see anything there. 
uh, yeah, and then basically I'm just gonna kill little Timmy. And then they'll hunt down that guy that's stuck in the corner. And then I'll show you the last thing, and, and then and that's What's it. Little Timmy done? Huh? You're gonna kill little Timmy. What's little Timmy done? Uh, everything. So you can figure this is the again this is the operator that's coming to Cepheus. These are the maps that are coming to Cepheus. It's all gonna be free. So here I can buy ammo, medical kits, and I can customize my character if I really want to before the next round change out her appearance. But the problem is that I'm changing it out live to Kira, my favorite character. But uh, it is the problem is is that you figure it has to she to compile. And then here's the customization system where I can like add a suppressor, add a thingy. And my level is really low, so I can't really do anything right now. And then I'm gonna go back and exit. Let's see if it's gonna freak out. If my luck is gonna break. Oh yeah, here comes the infected too. It probably broke. Again, this was an early prototype that we built really fast. So just proof of concept. And then we were like, what do we do with it? This is actually fun shit. So then we were like, okay, let's just merge it in now. Yeah, it's she screwed. It bugged out. But now if I switch over, I'll probably be Kira. Yeah, I'll be Kira. And I'll have the silencer and the scope that affects the gun's performance now. So you can see, yes, here be dragons or our bugs. But again, I think we made this in like a month or two. Yeah, we made it in two months. Alongside working on Cepheus Protocol. We were working on nights with energy drinks. That was a fun weekend. Well, theory of the weekends. And then you can see the, the sound changes and... Oh. They're a little too fast. We have to probably rebalance it for like their speed here over the normal RTS. I don't know. We'll have to play with that. Probably the grenade doesn't work. If I had to guess. Yeah, it doesn't work. So that's that map and basically different waves. They come different three different ways. Each side has turrets. Each side has traps that you can buy. Um, there's one other map I could show, which is stage two. Which is what I was trying to show earlier, but then it decided to mech screw me. I don't think this map was ever finished, actually. We got pulled off to work on the doctrine stuff, even though we're doing it in their spare, spare time. And we ended up like saying well, we was doing it a little too much, so we ended up pulling everyone off to finish up the Abrams and the Bradley and all that. So it got it didn't ever got like fully, fully finished. And then you can see the music was even implemented, nor the intro, and I'm in god mode for God's sake. This this game is very sweaty. This works in the wise. Like, you literally have to have, like, shoot here, shoot here. Oh, and then we also implemented this a slide mechanic. Oh, it's not working. Kind of working. That'll be coming over to the operator, too. That's weird. And then there's a melee. It makes you look like a crab. It makes you look like a crab person, but then it bugs out sometimes, too. It was just basically, and then we added a jump. We were just prototyping that, but we never got the jump animation in. So we're going to be carrying that over when we do the operator. We kind of did enough here so we can get a, we can get an idea of how fun it would be. And then we were like, well, let's bring it over. Like, we could just finish it there instead of just doing it here and then having to copy and paste and basically clean up more code. So the idea is that most of it's a copy and paste, but some of it has to be like, okay, we learn things in this prototype that we have to apply the Cepheus protocol because we did the wep weapons better, or we did the dismemberment better, or we did we did this optimization better, um, you know that kind of stuff. So the yeah, some of it is just like rewriting aspects of Cepheus protocol when we get to the operator. Uh, but we've, but I kind of already am doing that behind the scenes here and there. Uh, so to some degree, it's already kind of been happening behind, regardless. Um, so yeah. That's that's what's going on with the operator for the card to kind of explain what we're thinking. 
Uh, let's do that last question, and then let's head out, Dervar. All right. Just scroll back up and see if we can find us here. Uh, can we add more options for forceful evacuation when Cirque reputation drops? Huh? Say that over time, sorry. God damn it. Can we can we add more options for forceful evacuation when circ reputation drops? Forced evacuation when circ reputation drops. What are they what are they suggesting? I guess is what it comes down to. Are you talking about like evacuating what people from the city at gunpoint? Yeah. Like what what are we talking here? Essentially just like get them at gunpoint and go get them. Yeah, this city. I mean, you have martial law. I mean, you kind of... You have the ability to tell them to leave to another zone whether they like it or not. But they're talking about, like, in the current zone, like, go to the helipad kind of deal, right? I gotta think about that. Let me think about that. I don't have an answer on that. I'm gonna write that down. So that's one of the things where, like, I gotta think about all the outcomes of doing that and how that would affect everything. Not against it, but I would probably put that on a wish list and come back to that later in the future. Big old dude with a mini gun comes through your, comes busting through your door. You need to evacuate now. Why? Because I'll shoot you if you don't. Because <laughs> <laughs> democracy says you need to leave. <laughs> exactly, exactly. For <laughs> democracy. For democracy, you need to GTFL and go to that port right now. We all know what to do for democracy. Yeah, exactly. So, let me think about that. I'm not against it, but like... I'm trying to think of the best time to go back in. I want to give the civilian evacuation one last pass at the end of the Cirque and Doctrine stuff. Because I said I was going to audit everything that is involved with Cirque anyway. So I wanted to look at the evacuations and have a, a sit down with people that do evacuations to see what else they feel needs to be added. So put like a check mark in that and save that for a, for about a month or two from now. Like save that from a month from now. So when I am doing the audit, we're done with the, the everything else. We're just checking off boxes and making sure everything feels right for the Cirque. Reapproach me with that when when I when I when we are doing that. Because I'm pretty sure Lava will have some things and some other people will bring some other things to the table. Because I want to make sure every play style is viable in terms of different ways of tackling the game. So it's one of those things where it's just like, yeah, I'm not against it. Uh, okay, let's wrap it up, Durivar. Give the outro. <laughs> Night time. Unfortunately, Liberty is falling. Anyway. <laughs> um, thank you all for coming along and uh, joining us in this chaotic podcast. Yes. <clears throat> yes. We, uh, we talked a lot about democracy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if you'd like to support the development of Cepheus Protocol further, please do head over to the Patreon uh, and the Discord pledge area. Uh, we also have a merch store and a, a supporter pack on you, on Steam that you can grab. It, it basically it gives like different cosmetics, like the vehicles, and those cosmetics will carry over to every vehicle we ever add for Cirque. So like, you buy it for like two or three dollars and. You get like the NATO pack, and then that way you'll get that for like the VTOL, the Bradley, the Abrams, everything current as well, but only vehicles. But anyhow, I that's all. I don't it was think nice. I don't, huh? I don't think that need explaining. I'm over it. All right. Thanks everyone <laughs> for coming. Have a good night, or wherever you are geographically. <laughs> My mouse died again, so I can't end the event. Yay! Do we just sit here forever. and just stare at each other? Yes. I hate this mouse. I literally right click an event and I can't move my mouse and I can't stop the stream. <laughs>